I think we're making progress. It actually looks like the house sort of exploded. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George. I'm back at the estate sale house, and, well, what a difference a couple of days makes. I think we're making progress. It actually looks like the house sort of exploded, but this is the last chance I'm going to get to show you before the sale. So I wanted to go through and show you how things are setting up, point out some things we found, because we found some pretty good stuff. These are real pearls. This is tourmaline. And then just some fun costume uh, this is bone. We've got a scarab. This is just a regular watch, but it's got a neat millifiori face, so that's kind of cute. This, I believe, is made in Israel? No, Norway. Handmade in Norway. And that's kind of neat. That might actually be worth a little bit, because it's got a modernist look and it's a big amulet. Well, it's been a pretty crazy couple of days around here because our big job has been to empty all of the drawers as much as we can and get everything out to where people can see it. And there was a lot more hidden inside things. So we're going to show you the new things that we found. The place is semi-set. We hope by tomorrow it will be completely set and we will price and then that way we'll be ready for the sale to start on Friday. The showcase right inside the door certainly got more populated. We have a Fitz and Floyd piece in the original box, one of these Swiss bells with the beautiful ring. We have more Waterford, Shannon crystal. This is a very pretty little piece here. I know Kat the Nurse Flipper said she sells these Asian pieces with the hard stone very well. This little guy here just appeared this afternoon. This is Kay Finch. You can tell by the little eyes. Let me get that in a little better light so you can see the eyelash. It is marked, but it's very faint, but I recognize the piece, so I knew what to look for, which is nice. The lampwork carousel is cute. These are nice opera glasses. They're a silver tone, they're plated, they're not sterling silver or anything, so they have a tarnish to them that is mellow and kind of sweet. And I think they have a good look. Opera glasses are selling again for me. I don't know how other dealers are doing with them, but I'm not having luck keeping them in stock, so that's a nice thing. Another Waterford piece, that's Boda from Sweden. Aura 4's... It's just a combination of all sorts of things. This little jade Alaskan sled dog piece. This is a nice little piece of cut crystal hanging out way down here at the bottom. We might end up elevating that. This looks like a horrible record, but we found a bunch of records like you saw, and this one says promotional copy, so this could be obscure. We're going to look that one up, so that's why it's on this chair, along with a bunch of miscellaneous other things that we have to sort through. We reset the table somewhat. We brought up one of the sets of china that's pretty, and we actually, well, I just was using the table, so the silver plate is on the floor there. We found a whole set, a silver plate tea service with the covered butter domes, and that was sitting in a box in the garage, so we brought that in. You'll notice that we put the Peters and Reed's lamps together. We really would like to have people be able to see things in pairs if they are something we're going to sell in pairs, so we grouped those. You'll see a few different things here, including the Royal Dalton ladies, who have appeared to occupy the top shelf. These are also Royal Dalton. I honestly hadn't seen these. These must have appeared from a back bedroom. Yes, this one is Karen. And this one is... Enchantment. This little cordial set is nice. It came out from the bar area. This appeared right near the end of the day. This is a really neat piece. This is an incense burner. It's got an Egyptological look to it. This is 1920s. This was in a box in the garage and had not been out where it could be seen for a long, long time. 
So we were glad to see it again. Someone else will be too. These sell rather well. They're made of spelter. We found more Chinese stitchery. Some of these pieces appear to have some age. I think some of these go back to the nationalist era before the communist takeover. So they're a little older than some of what we've seen elsewhere in the house. A couple of mud men as well. And a neat little cork scene. These little cork scenes are starting to sell. So I wanted to feature that. I've got to say, this house is so full, I really try to avoid covering all the furniture because it's hard to see the furniture underneath. And then if people want to buy the furniture, what do you do with the stuff? But we just had no choice in this house. It is so packed full. As you saw, we've already spread out all through the garage, all through the pool deck. I mean, unless we start putting a tent out in the yard, I don't know what else we could do. <laughs> Here we have a signed photo of Tom Selleck. Very important. And this nice carved table with the tray. I did try to leave that so you could at least see the design on the top. That lifts off so that you could serve people on the tray and then set it back down on the piece of furniture. That was popular in the 1920s and then again in the 1950s and 60s. Came up with a bunch of cameras in the garage, including some old ones. The brownie reflex is in there, which is neat. This is an old one from the 1930s. And this one is an Argus, which would have been a brownie-type point-and-shoot back from the 50s. Here is a very handsome chrome 1920s or early 30s percolator with the cream and sugar set. That was nice to find. And we also found some neat old linens in the bottoms of some of the drawers were the 1950s era and 60s era linens like the blue with the daisies. This is very vibrant here. This is out of the 50s. That's got great color and seems to be in really terrific shape, so that'll sell for a decent price. And then this is a round one, also from the 50s. And I imagine, looking at the gold tones in this, with the anthurium and other flowers, that they probably used it to put these glasses on. This is a nice set with the silver leaf. It's got the round spots that make you think of the eclipse pattern by Russell Wright, but then it's overdone in gold leaf with gold leaves. We had no choice but to open up the game table because there were so many things that we needed to find room for. This is St. Peter's Church. It's a lily put lane. They're similar to David Winter Cottages. Both were very popular, made in England out of ceramic in the 1980s, and people are collecting them again now. This is a cute little piece with something that looks rather like dandelions. And this is Royal Copenhagen. This is very heavy. This is alabaster, and I thought he was really good looking. And he has a glass eye. So this one's actually a rather nicely done piece. Italian, probably from about 1960. So an interesting and eclectic group of things. Now, some of these items came from the top shelf there. We really had to get things off the very tip top shelves because nobody will be able to reach there. And there is so much stuff in this house and we will be busy. We won't really have time to get on ladders and take things down for people. So we just had to try to make it as easy as we could. Cute little 1950s figurines. I like this little uh, Westie set very much. There's an old trusty postal scale. I always think of trusty huckster mercantile and Patrick when I see these. The Ellie Smith Scotty Dog bookends from about 1940. We only have one of the horses. We're not sure where the other horse went. We went through the books not terribly thoroughly, but enough to pick out some we thought were interesting or older. Just to show covers, we put some of them out here. The Rainy Day is a very cute little book that was something to entertain little girls in the Victorian era on a rainy day. This one's called Daily Food. It's full of all sorts of wonderful affirmations and other glad tidings. There's Donovan. That's a book we see fairly often, but it's got a great Gibson girl cover. And then a bunch of various yearbooks from the local area as well as out of the area, and we think that those will do rather well. Here's another one of the modern postage stamp albums. We do see these quite a bit. 
These are all contemporary, but they're cute and they were all in their original boxes. Now the cottage piece, on the other hand, is vintage. And that's going to be from England, circa 1950. We actually found some interesting cookware. Love this flower power pattern. I don't see this one very often and the white knob is something a little different. This is Swedish, actually. Both of these hanging in the window are more Swedish glass. And then the Port Marion all ended up together and we had a few people interested in this already. I'm sorry to say that once we've shot and shown video of a place like this, it's not really fair to the people who are coming to the sale to pre-sell stuff, so I apologize to those of you who called and asked if you could order it, but I hope you will come to the sale. The enamelware ended up on top. We took all of the tins and put them outside because we needed things that were easy to grab. I'm tall enough to take these down for someone in the middle of the sale, but I wouldn't be able to deal with 50 tins at a time and getting the one off the bottom. So that's how we handled that. Speaking of collectible kitchenware, there was a bunch of Tupperware, earlier pieces, some primary colors, some of the pastel colors, the ubiquitous 1970s cake carrier and pie carrier. Tupperware was made in Florida originally, so there is a collector market for it here. We will have to pull up these old crockery bowls from the 1920s and 30s. And we have a little bit of cornflower blue as well. Well, I hope you're enjoying seeing the progress that we've made so far. And while you're at it, do click that bell to subscribe and be notified of future videos. We love showing off estate sales that we're preparing. We enjoy showing off antique shows we're either attending or selling at. And we really enjoy showing appraisal fairs. Anything that we're doing in the antique and vintage world is fair game. And we try to keep it interesting and make it fun. So we appreciate your subscription. It doesn't cost anything, but it lets us communicate with you, which is great. We also do have memberships if you want to support the channel on a higher level. We're very grateful for that. We will have our upcoming monthly bonus video for our level 2 members coming out in the next 10 days or so. And if you're a level 2 member, you'll get a notification about that. If you're not, you can click join if you see that up above, or you can look in the description for more details. This seems appropriate for here. Extremes of fashion. Of course, the nudist colony is about an hour north of here. I'm sure they're very cold tonight. It's only going to be in the 40s. But this is a very cute little 1920s print. We've got this a little more organized now, so we were able to get to this very sweet little dresser set, which even has a hat pin holder. And this is Limoges. This is 1910s Limoges with the hand-painted roses. Limoges seems to still do well if it is boudoir. And the back bedrooms have probably shaped up the best of all. Well, actually, there's another room that's looking pretty good, too. There's some neat things in here. This set is Estee Lauder. It's hardly been used. This is a very nice little art glass. And it says right on it, Murano perfume bottle. So that's going to be nice for someone. This looks like a Fabergé style egg. It is actually done in Russia. And it is a very nice glass piece with the double eagle, the imperial markings all over it. Very handsome. We'll have to look into this one because I am not sure what these go for. Lots of perfume bottles. A lot are still full. This one's a cute little one from the 60s, but we have a lot of things that are more contemporary. Fragrances do sell well at estate sales. And I know these are more contemporary, but people seem to really like these bejeweled boxes for the dresser. Whiting and Davis purse. This is Rossi glass. This is a Canadian company that made cranberry glass primarily, although other pieces as well. It's somewhat similar in style to chalet glass, but not quite as extreme. And it was done at a little later time really more in the 1980s era. The big piece here with the flowers is going to be a 1970s Capo de Monte, and then we have some little applied floral pieces by various English companies, and they seem to be in good shape. The quilts have increased in number, which is nice. This one has some neat fabrics that tell us that it's a little bit older with this wedding band, and or wedding ring, and then the hexagonal one, 
Again, we can see some 1960s era colors with this hot pink in there, so that gives us an idea of the age of that piece. Several linens that are marked Vera. This one is later Vera because the earlier ones have the ladybug, some Irish linen and Scottish linen. Speaking of Vera, here are some Vera hankies that appeared, along with a couple of lucite purses and a seal skin purse and a patent leather purse. So we have some vintage handbags that we did not realize were here. That's kind of a neat thing to see. And then another interesting pyrography chocolate box. That was a popular thing in the late 1910s to have the candy boxes have this same design that people were making at home. Look at this cute linen with Jack and Jill. Let me turn the camera so you can see it a little better. Nice embroidery. Look at the old typewriter on the Printing and Stationery Company. Agents for L.C. Smith and Corona typewriters. There's a typewriter that I just sold for $100 in St. Petersburg, interestingly enough, considering that this ruler was for a stationery company in St. Petersburg back when that was a new item. We found a couple of really pretty shawls. This is a nice one here with the silk embroidery and the big flowers. I think that's very sweet and it's in good condition no stains which is very important people like them but they like them to be as clean as possible and another quilt has appeared this one with the big irises we have a few little various miniatures we finally got down to the bottom of these beds they did a nice job of getting this to where you can see it and look afghans on pillows I'm mainly showing you things that I think are vintage that you haven't seen before in this estate, but there's just so much. This is a Lennox picture frame in the original box. There's some Lennox vases here. These look older than they are. I believe these are actually fairly contemporary pieces of glass, but they're nice. They will probably be sold incorrectly as Murano, which they are not. Not by us. I'm just saying that's something to look for out there. People are calling everything Murano, including makers in Venice who are not on the island of Murano. These little rose pieces are cute. English, 1970s. The dresser tray is something that will sell. And then this, I believe, is a pen. Yes, there we go. Sometimes these have ready kilowatt on them and then they're collectible for that. Well, I hope you're enjoying this walkabout where you're seeing the things that we found in the last couple of days and getting an idea for how we've set the house. I would have liked to have done this live, but the reception is not good here. But I promise that I will have more content coming soon on my live channel. In fact, I might just surprise you. This room probably got the biggest transformation today because Rhonda, who's really great, came and helped us and she got some of the clothes in the closet, some of the nicer and more interesting things so that they can breathe a little bit and be seen better. She also was able to wrestle this room into shape, put out the rest of the Hummel figurines. These are all these willow figures, willow tree. There are collectors for these as well. Another Lennox vase. Oh my goodness, we have Hummels, and then there's some Hummels, and then there's some Hummels, and then there's some more Hummels. This is a genuine China doll head. She is Armand Marseille from Germany. These were good doll heads. They were not as expensive as Jumeau or some of the really high-end French porcelain dolls of their time. But it does have the eyes that open and close and are glass. It's got the teeth showing, which is always a little more desirable. So someone who knows dolls will pick that up. And look at these cute little dilapidated bunny and bear from the 1940s or 50s. We also have a bunch of doll clothes. The polka dot dress looks like it might be Shirley Temple. And then some cute little pieces up here. This doll has a petulant look. We have a frozen Charlotte that's jointed. Here's the comb and curlers for your Madame Alexander doll. These are worth more than the dolls in some cases now because the accessories are hard to find. This guy's got a flat tire, but it is actually a good old milk and cream whale, two flat tires. 
It's got the cream barrels though, so someone will buy it for that. And Barkley is a company that you don't see as often as Tootsie Toy, but it's very clearly 1940s. And someone will buy it and put new wheels on it. You can get reproduction rubber tires because rubber, even if the rest of it's in perfect shape, can just go bad all by itself, even if you store it well. So sometimes that's considered acceptable. Little miniature sad iron. And then this piece is a little sewing machine. It's one of the better plastic doll furniture pieces made by Renoir. And it says Renoir right on the sewing machine. This is going to be early 1950s. And it's all there and in good shape and it does flip up so that you could actually show it as a sewing machine. We do have this really cool 60s paisley here in the suitcase. And we have this fun basket purse. 1960s or 70s. People are starting to like these again. Lots of little fun things everywhere you look. I think people are going to really enjoy this sale. Now this is not a Yadro, it's Princess House. Princess House tried to make things that looked like Yadro. If you look at the details in the face it's not nearly as crisp. But they are cute and there are people collecting Princess House things now. The little clown here is a Yadro and is marked. And then this is not. So you can kind of see the difference. Yadro has a bigger color spectrum and the detail is better. Look how happy that little bird is. There's just so much in this house. Somebody is going to find something they like. We have a few better scarves here. We have some Matryoshka dolls, the Russian nesting dolls. Nice little array there. Now we're used to these strip photos. I always think of these as being photo booths in the 50s, but look, this gal is definitely earlier than that, and they had the photo booths then, and she mugged it up for that. And apparently, there was even an earlier version, because look at this, where they have various shots of the same person. That's got to be 1890s. So everything you think is new, well, there might be an older version that you're not aware of. And then this tapestry is very nice. This is either Belgian or French from the 1930s. We've moved all the Christmas out into the garage. False graph winter berry in the box. Lots of stuff in the original box. Lennox in the box. Collectible Santas in the box. Even a fiber optic village. We moved all the cleaning supplies out to one place. We have all the Christmas trees up high. We've uncovered some of the furniture. And this is much better here, I have to say. This is Susan. I'm going to give some shout outs to my crew. They are not here. They've gone home for the day, but Susan did a great job with the garage and we found some neat old stuff out here. This is a bamboo fly rod from the 1930s or 40s. Now the flies are all gone, but the rod is in good shape and you know that might be a 40 or 50 dollar item. This is cute as can be. Pyrography 1910s chocolate and bonbons and look at that car on there. An old horseless carriage. I just think that is the neatest thing. And another cigar box underneath. There's our big old IBM Selectric. So we did find the typewriter that those little pieces went to. She's really cute. Unfortunately, she's broken, which is too bad because she's 1930s from Germany and that would be worth something in better condition. This little 50s era wire rack. This is the sort of thing I like to buy and repaint. This is an old baby carriage from probably the 1920s, all taken apart with its original pad and everything in there. Out the back door here we see some columns, those concrete pillars. Someone will actually like those and find some way to use them. We got this chest uncovered where you can see it, so it looks a lot prettier this way. Not bad old crockery piece, a one gallon. I'm not sure if that would be a waterer or what. And I'm not sure who the maker is. There isn't any indication at all, but it looks to have salt glaze and be early 1900s. And I'm hopeful to find one more table where I can put out some paper ephemera because there were a few interesting things. This is the official souvenir program from a Shriners convention in Los Angeles in 1950. And it's showing Yosemite Falls and the Hotel del Coronado where Some Like It Hot was filmed in San Diego or across from San Diego. There's a bunch of people in fezzes having a good time. It is the Shrine Convention 
in Los Angeles, and apparently they had quite a bunch of stuff going on. Circus acts, an equestrian show, and Shriner's Parade. They really did it up, I'm sure. Uh, those conventions were notorious. There's Will Rogers Ranch up on the top. Are you jealous, Misty? <laughs> Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter would really like to spend a weekend at Mackinac Island, or even a night. It only costs about $2,000 to stay in that hotel. But there's a little jitney that took these people around because they stayed there on their way to the Sioux Lock Centennial Exposition, which apparently was a fair held in 1955 in Michigan, and they've got three admission tickets. This is a local interest thing here. This was the first game, 1998, played by what at the time was the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in Tropicana Field. They are intending to move from that domed stadium into a new field that they hope to build in Tampa in a few years. But they played the Detroit Tigers in their first game. And this is definitely collectible here. This is interesting and odd and a little sad. This is a report of the death of an American citizen. Apparently they went to uh, Nootka Island and had a heart attack. So. That was a short vacation, sad for them, but it's an interesting piece because this would have been something that would have had to have been issued through the Foreign Service in order to bring the body back to the United States. So that's a little macabre, but collectible. And then my favorite, the 1933 to 34 Chicago World's Fair Century of Progress Exposition Official Book of Views. Now the cover is loose and a little tattered, but the views on the inside are wonderful. They show all of the renderings before the fair was built of what it was going to look like. Such a strong Art Deco design influence at the Chicago World's Fair. Truly amazing. It was all about transportation. That was the theme. Here is the Vienna Cafe, the Enchanted Island for Children, and this is some sort of a piece in the middle that I just discovered. Hmm, what is this? Property of H. Porter of Galena, Illinois, and this actually is real from 1865. This is talking about the funeral of Abraham Lincoln and how the procession was going to go. Well, that's a rather interesting thing for someone to have collected as a handbill, and that might be of some value, so we'll have to look into that. Well, that was a neat thing to find in the Enchanted Island for Children. There is Soldier Field when you see the columns. They've obviously expanded. It's about this tall and has suites on the end, and I think people live on one end of it, but the columns are still there. They have kept them from all that time. And there we are cavorting on the beach after going to the fair. And then here are the actual photos from the World's Fair that were given out. Here's a row of flags. Here is this amazing structure that could be built today and would look as modern as it did in 1933. A view of some of the exhibits out on the island and the Sky Tram. This one is Prairie Farmer, a magazine which I will tell you about if you are a Level 2 member in my upcoming video. And this one is another neat view of the fair at night from the Sky Tram, I believe. What a fun thing that must have been to see. And in the middle of the Depression, it cost 50 cents to get in, and they did very, very well. People came from all over because it was a glimpse of a happier future. Even the back deck ended up with some vintage and collectible items. The tins are all newer in reproduction, but this old striped crock this has some age. Little hammered aluminum piece from the 1930s there. Uncle Ben's is no more, so that's something that somebody may buy just for collectible posterity. Lots of different outdoor flags and banners and wind socks. Just a ton of them. Some old games, including Cootie. We got the books out here so that you could actually get to the books that were on the bookshelves. And it took this much space 
just to get the bookshelves cleared. The Way to Better Speech. That's kind of a neat old book. Jefferson School, Berwyn, Illinois. This Way to Better Speech. All the orchids are in the shade where they like, and then we found these in the garage, and I thought these were really neat. This one's a commercial manufacturing. This would have had the little plastic animals, or maybe even wooden, or more likely cardboard animals from the 1940s or 50s. But then somebody made this gal, this really cute log cabin that looks to date from probably the 1930s, by the way this is done. And a barn with a silo. And this really cool windmill. So I think those are going to sell right away. They're really neat. And then we have records, records, records. But some of the records look pretty interesting. We haven't had a chance to go through too much. We have Fabian. Ooh, isn't he dreamy? <laughs> Hold that tiger. That tiger happens to be a stife tiger. George Seagal, who just recently departed this world. Someone will have a good time going through those and picking out the best. I don't know if we'll have time. We may just have to put them out at $2 each and someone might get a bargain. It's a Small World from Walt Disney. Harry Belafonte, and that's a good album there. A bunch of old sheet music. Showboat was one of the musicals I liked that I saw. I'm not a big musical guy, but Showboat was pretty fun. Old Man River. Mm, anyway, famous rumbas. Now, some of these 45s could be good. We have Mambos. We have a bunch of stuff on Capitol Records, and this is where somebody needs to take some time. That's Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra, but I suspect there's some stuff that's a little more hip in here. There's Guy Lombardo, Judy Garland. Bobby Darren, one of my favorites. Moment of Love on one side, and She's Tan-Fastic on the other side. Fraternity Records, that's a more obscure label. Rock a Boogie by Lou Douglas, and Memories of Paris. Someone will have a lot of fun going through all this. And this room was the room that ended up giving us something really amazing. Now, the first thing I'll show, which I don't think I did before, is this marionette from Indonesia, I believe. They might be Balinese. I think those are kind of neat. We've got a couple of the old cedar candy boxes that people use for dresser boxes now. But the real surprise was in this drawer. I'm gonna show you this drawer and you'll say, what's surprising about that? This is what we found in the lingerie drawer. It's tossed and tousled, but we're gonna match all of this up and we expect that we will get several thousand dollars for this. Well, it's really been fun showing you what we've done in the last couple of days. I think we've made good progress. I want to encourage you, if you are anywhere in Central Florida, this is a sale worth coming to. We are very excited to do this. We're glad to bring it to our viewers. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Catch me here. Catch me on my live channel. Catch me at the social media links you see in the description. And we will see you again soon with more fun and adventures in the world of antiques and vintage. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video.
Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.